I want to um, talk about the situation in Belarus. Um, I've got a particular interest in that because I've got a good friend in Minsk and I've been talking to her online about the situation. Um, I've known her way back to 2003 when we were both at an international youth camp in the Netherlands. Um, but before I talk about Belarus, um, there's a lot happening in the news right now. Um, it's of course the Democratic National Convention, which is like no other, it's all been cyber. A lot more low-key than usual, not the big sort of carnival-like atmosphere with lots of balloons and so on. Joe Biden is now the official Democratic uh, nominee with Kamala Harris as his running mate. Um, there was a speech by Jill Biden. All of this was online. Very, very strange situation, very unusual. Um, it has some benefit, I think, because I think taking away the um, noise, so to speak, almost gives more of a sincerity to what the speakers want to say. Um, the other big news tonight is it appears there's been a coup d'etat in Mali. Uh, the political crisis in that country is only getting worse. Um, so there's a lot going on. But like I said, I, I want to talk a bit about the situation in Belarus. So Alexander Lukashenko, a uh, man described as Europe's last dictator, a pretty brutal regime. I remember um, back in the, in the 2000s, the independent newspaper carried a front page which showed um, photos of political dissidents, um, mostly men, some women as well, who had been jailed under the Lukashenko regime. Um, you know, this is a regime that can rival anything in the old Soviet Union. Um, and so when Mr. Lukashenko won supposedly 80% of the votes, um, won a sixth term in office, he's been in power since 1994, uh, you know, some 26 years. Um, it's almost like the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess. Um, big protests in Minsk and in other cities. Um, you know, these would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. I always feel in these situations, um, I mean, it's too early to say if it's a full scale revolution, but I always feel in these situations that it takes a few brave people to make those moves in dictatorship, to speak out, to do the right thing for the, for the tide to turn. Um, and it definitely seems that the situation is weighing against Lukashenko. Yes, he has the security services on his side at the moment, but it may well be that there are defections. Um, as I understand it, um, Svetlana uh, uh, Tishka, Tik, excuse me, Tikhanovskaya, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, she is heading an opposition um, consultation council. And they're being very clear that they're not staging a power grab, although the protesters are adamant that she won the election and there was massive vote rigging. Um, honestly, I don't know a great deal about her, but she comes across as composed under the circumstances. Um, you know, very diplomatic. Uh, her husband is in jail. Um, already there's been at least two deaths. Uh, two, two men have been killed in the brutal crackdown. Um, many others have been injured, there's been scores of arrests. Uh, this is a very tense situation, potentially a very volatile situation. But the impression I get is that there is also a momentum with the protesters. Um, my friend um, has been giving me links to some of the things that are going on there, uh, some extreme brutality. Um, there's also been an abundance of the alternative flag. Uh, so this is the anti-regime flag. It's a white, red, white tricolor, as opposed to the current flag, which is a kind of red and green tricolor with a sort of design at the side. Um, so, you know, this is, um, this is a country that's on the brink because my friend admitted that whilst there was excitement that Lukashenko might be on the way out, the bigger fear is actually what Russia might do. Um, international responses, of course, have been um, varied. Macron and Merkel have apparently contacted Moscow. 
not Minsk directly. They've been on the uh, Merkel and Macron have been on the phone to Putin. That'd be an interesting conversation. Um, CGTN, China's state mouthpiece, has come out with the usual rhetoric of not interfering in another country's internal affairs. They say Belarus doesn't pose a regional threat. Well, of course it doesn't. It's a relatively small country geopolitically, but um, that's a narrative they use every time because, of course, they don't like scrutiny of their own brutal human rights record. Um, but, you know, this is something that absolutely Russia will be taking a huge interest in. Belarus, from my understanding, has a complex relationship with Russia. I mean, it literally is white Russia, but it is an independent state. Um, on paper, Lukashenko is pro-Moscow, but his relationship with Putin has not been entirely stable. Um, the question is, can Putin afford to see him go? Um, if we look at Chechnya, and it's not exactly the same situation because Chechnya hasn't been fully independent. Um, there have been, you know, cases of Russia sort of weighing in on governors there um, and kind of pulling the strings, so to speak. Uh, in the case of Belarus, it's a bit different because it is an independent country. Um, will Moscow back... Uh, the opposition. Um, I think it's unlikely. There's already been an indication that Moscow's offering military assistance if need be. So that could potentially become a very serious situation. It could even lead to, uh, I don't want to say it, but civil war. Um, in that part of the world, it isn't inconceivable. Um, there's already been violence. I really, really hope this situation doesn't escalate. Um, Lukashenko has to go. It's very clear that the, there is discontent against him. And as an indication of this, it isn't just people who would usually be critical of the regime. Um, a few days ago, he was speaking to manual workers and they openly booed him. So I think what's happening in Belarus is people who were previously, would have been previously afraid to openly defy the regime are now finding a momentum. So in a sense, the true face of the Belarusian population is coming through. Lukashenko has to go. He's had 26 years in power. There probably were some successes. Um, there usually is with dictatorships. You know, there are usually some successes that they use to cling on to power. But ultimately, um, I think when push comes to shove, I, I don't really believe in this theory that democracy is a Western idea and only those who live in liberal democracies want transparency and openness and um, relative freedom. I don't believe that absolute freedom exists. Uh, I don't believe that's a Western invention. I believe, and some might say this is naive, but I believe it's fundamental human nature. I think where there are dictatorships in this world, they survive because they do just enough you know, keep themselves in public favour. And it's a combination of that and also the fear factor because there's severe consequences for standing up to regimes um, and the brave people who do start that tide, um, you know, uh, pay for it. But in the, this case, um, of course, the, from Moscow's perspective, they will they've long been concerned about as they see it European encirclement, or at least on that side, um, you know, increasing EU influence. Well Belarus isn't about to join the European Union. That's not I don't even see that in the cards in the next five years. But if Moscow backs Lukashenko and the momentum turns against him, then you know Moscow will be hated in Belarus. If that's not already the case. My friend said that um, she was concerned about what Russia will do, i.e. if Russia will send some sort of military support. It's even plausible that the situation could get out of hand and Russia will do what they've done in Ukraine and try to annex it. Um, although in the case of Belarus, it's not so much about the demographics of the country. It's more political than ethnic, um, from what I understand it. So anyway, this is something I'm going to be following very closely and um, I, I just hope it doesn't escalate into something more serious. Lukashenko has to go. 
If this man truly cares about his country, he has to step down and he'll get credit for that. Mugabe stepped down in Zimbabwe three years ago and that was relatively bloodless. In fact, it was. There wasn't major violence in, that, in those events. And Mugabe even got some credit for it. So Lukashenko, if he stepped down now, it's not in the nature of dictators, but if he stepped down voluntarily, um, due to the huge discontent there is, um, you know, that will, that will give him some credit in international opinion. If he doesn't, if he takes a hard line, the situation will only get worse. And he'll end up paying for it, because most dictators do. But uh, as for the role of outsiders, um, certainly there's no there's no concept of intervening militarily or anything like that. But I do think we need to give moral support to the Belarusian people. I think we need to give moral support to anyone in the world who's fundamentally fighting against um, against oppression. And I don't want to be too sentimental or ideological about it, but that's my gut feeling. Um, ultimately. I, I am not convinced by arguments of benevolent dictatorship. I think ultimately every dictatorship is doomed to fail because at some point, even in China, with all the power the Chinese Communist Party has, there are signs of cracks, even within Chinese society. They've just um, expelled a senior uh, woman in the party. She's now speaking out against, uh, as she called it, Xi Jinping's zombie regime. So, and even in Russia, Russia itself, there are protests in the Far East. Uh, you know, Putin doesn't have the intense popularity that RT would have people believe, and Putin's sycophants around the world would have us believe. There is significant discontent in in Russia as well. So, I think it's um, fundamental human nature, um, and I'll be following developments as they progress.